Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the plate heat exchangers. They're often referred to as PHEs, PHXs, or sometimes just HX or HEX. Now, plate heat exchangers are very common. They are used extensively in building services and manufacturing. The reason they are popular is because they are very compact, they're very efficient, they're easy to service, they need very low maintenance as well. Their purpose is to transfer thermal energy from one fluid in one system to another without the two fluids mixing together. For example, in building services, you might want to transfer heat from a primary loop connected to a boiler over to a separate secondary loop, or maybe in a district heating network. Or in uh, manufacturing, you may want to cool down some oil um, and use water to cool that down, but obviously you don't want to mix the oil and the water together. Now, if we pulled one of the heat exchangers apart, we're going to have uh, a look at some of the main components here. So we've got the end plates here, or the front and back cover, and these are made from usually a mild steel, and uh, they're very strong. They're there to hold everything together. Then we've got the nuts. These attach, obviously, and tighten up onto the tightening bolts. The tightening bolts, they fit in, uh, there's some grooves in there, and they'll run the entire length of the uh, heat exchanger and the bolts are tightened on these uh, and that will compress all the plates together and squeeze the gaskets against the plates to make the heat exchanger completely waterproof or leak leak proof and then wedged in between there we've got the plates where the heat transfer occurs and we've also got the gaskets uh, which sit in between the the plates and that's what gives it the seal Larger heat exchangers will also have this supporting bar at the top and the bottom. And you can see here that the case and the plates, uh, they just slide along there and there's various ways that they can come off. Either they, they twist, these ones would be too big to twist off, but uh, you can, there's a section removed at the back where these will just drop out. But the smaller ones, these will just slide in and out. Now you can see a real plate, a heat exchanger plate there on the screen. Now these are typically made from steel or titanium and you can see they've got this pattern uh, grooved into them or stamped into them. These patterns are going to uh, strengthen the plates, obviously they're, they're incredibly thin. And they're also going to increase the heat transfer surface area as well as creating a very turbulent flow inside them. So it's not smooth, the, all the water has to uh, rubble across these and come out very rough and turbulent. Now between the plates we've got the uh, gaskets here, just this rubber gasket. And that is attached to the face of the plate. And the purpose of the gasket is to ensure a tight fit and to prevent leaks. The gasket also allows or prevents the flow of fluid into the sheet. Um, you can see here, so in this section here, we've got the rubber seal coming across and a double seal on this one so that no fluid in this can leak out or, or flow in, uh, as well as this side, whereas here there is no uh, gasket there so the fluid if it entered here it could flow down and come down and enter into this one here because there isn't anything there same as this one the fluid can only come out of here and travel up and then into this section here into that hole now you'll probably notice that the tightening bolts are uh, they're actually uh, they extend far past the heat exchanger that's for a few reasons one is obviously to be able to uh, fit all these plates and etc on during the uh, insulation or during maintenance but also this gives you the ability to extend the plate heat exchanger in future. So this one here is actually from a district heating network and uh, at the moment the building's only half complete and they're expecting to double the building size so they've, they've allowed uh, extra bolt lengths to be added and that means that the plates can be added and this heat exchanger can grow with the demand. Now there's a couple of ways that the plate heat exchanger can be piped up. Uh, this is the most common version and the version that we're going to be looking at today. That is where uh, the inlets and outlets are all on the front plate. So the fluids will enter, uh, flow through their channels and then make their way back to the front plate. The other version is where the fluids, uh, one of the fluids enters through the front plate and it passes through there and then makes its way and it will then exit through the back plate as well as one of the fluids will enter there as well. Now. This version here, the first version, is the most common version, and that is because uh, you don't need to alter the pipe work if you need to extend the plate heat exchanger in the future, whereas with the second version here, uh, all the pipe work that's connected will have to be removed and remade to fit 
uh, depending on how far you extend your plate heat exchanger. So it, it's not really so practical. That is why this one is far more common. And you can just see in all these examples here, that is exactly what's happening. So the flow and return are happening on the front plate there. So how does it work? Well, we've already seen that if you remove some of the seal, then the, flow, the uh, fluid can flow through there. So if we stack a number of plates together, then you'll see it forms this, uh, this channel, this pipe-like uh, feature flowing through all the plates. And then we can add the front and back plates onto there and then we get these channels where the water can, or the fluid, whatever you've got, uh, can then flow through certain plates and it can't flow through other plates. And let's just see an example of how this would work practically. So if we open up the heat exchanger again, now you can see here that the gaskets is oriented uh, differently on, on, on the uh, alternating plates there for the heat exchange. So this one here, you can see uh, a fluid in this pipe would not be allowed to pass through, or this one, and this one it would, so it just alternates uh, vice versa all the way through. And so if we pass one fluid through there, you can see it entering through this top port, passing all the way through. It can't pass through this one. It's got a, there's a seal there. It gets to the next plate. Oh, there's no seal there, so we can pass through there. Can't go into this hole, but it can go into this one because there is no seal. And so all these will pass through, collect up, and make its way back out. Now the same thing is going to be happening with the other fluid we're passing through. So you can see here we're passing a hot fluid through, and this one is entering through the bottom port, coming along. Uh, it's getting to the plates. And some of them it can pass through, so it will. Others it cannot leave that pipe, so it will not. And it will just pass through all the way until it creates that loop and exits. So if we mix these two fluids together, what's going to happen is the cold fluid is going to enter, uh, pass through, and then on the other side of the plate is the, the hot fluid. So that is going to take some of that heat away, so the cold fluid will warm up and that will leave as a, a much warmer fluid. And the hot fluid that comes in is going to cool down because it's going to give up some of its heat into the cold stream. And then that will leave as a much cooler fluid. So if we just look at a very basic example of how this is working, uh, let's just say we've got a few plates here and we've got a cold channel, hot channel and another cold channel. Now if we let the hot fluid enter into the channel there, and as that happens, heat is then going to conduct through into the plate because they are touching, so that heat will then pass through and warm up this plate. And if we then pass the cold fluid into the cold channels, then some of the heat in those plates which have been heated up, will, it will start to cool down because some of that thermal energy is transferring over into the cold fluid. That's through conduction. And as that happens, the cold fluid begins to warm up and obviously the hot fluid is going to start to cool down. So then the heat exchanger starts to equal up, uh, equalize out and that means that the cold fluid is going to enter, uh, is going to exit warm and the hot fluid is going to exit cool. And that temperature gradient is going to then vary through the heat exchanger, through the plates and also through the fluids which is uh, con conducting the heat. So when you combine all of this together that is how you get the heat transfer occur in the plate heat exchanger. Now you can also notice that these fluids are flowing in counter flow. Now that is the best configuration for the most uh, effectiveness because the log mean temperature difference, the LMTD, is at the greatest. We'll have a look at what that means uh, in another video. This video is just for you to understand how it's working and why it works. I'll just give you a real world example of a heat exchanger here as well. So uh, this is a German heat exchanger as you can see uh, written down here. But you can see this heat exchanger here can provide uh, 1500 kilowatts of thermal, thermal energy and has a transmission area of 29.3 meters squared with a flow rate of uh, 42,000 of almost 43,000 liters per hour. It will also handle up to 100 bar on, on each side of the plate. So you can see these things are very powerful and they're very efficient and very compact in how they work. Now if you do have one of these in your buildings, please also remember to insulate this as uh, it's much more energy efficient and keep the plastic threads, um, plastic sheets on the threads to protect them from damage, otherwise you won't be able to get these nuts off very easily.
Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and it helped you. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you very much for watching.